Sign up for The Brief, our daily newsletter that keeps readers up to speed on the most essential Texas news. After a redistricting proposal made Texas' 34th congressional district more blue last fall, the top Republican candidate for the seat, Myra Flores, traveled to the state capitol in Austin to plead with lawmakers to reconsider. It seemed, she said, that despite all the new Republican talk about competing in South Texas, the GOP map drawers were sending the message of not really caring about voters there, depriving them of a competitive district. But lawmakers were unswayed and eventually passed a map that transformed the 34th district from one that President Joe Biden carried in 2020 by just four percentage points, a bona fide battleground for the 2022 midterms, to one that he would have won by 16 points. It was a blow to Flores, but in a twist of fate, nine months later, she is heading to Congress from the 34th district, and earlier than expected. She now carries the distinction of being one of the few Republicans to represent the Rio Grande Valley in modern history as well as the first Mexican-born woman to serve in Congress. Her outright victory in the special election is just the latest chapter in a topsy-turvy election cycle in South Texas, which Republicans have been working overtime to turn into a new battleground ever since Biden's underperformance throughout the region in 2020. And it came together thanks to a Democratic incumbent, Philemon Vela, who decided to quit early for a high-paying K Street job, a GOP that was unflinching in its ambitions to capture the seat and a National Democratic Party that purposefully chose to keep its distance. Flores will get to serve only until January, and she faces a much different election in November for the full term, when the new, Bluer district is in effect and her opponent will be U.S. Representative Vicente Gonzalez, DMC Allen. State and national Democrats were quick to point that out as results came in Tuesday night, but even then, some Democrats said the lessons of Flores' special election breakthrough should not be disregarded. One of those lessons they made crystal clear, the National Party needs to pay more attention to South Texas. Her resources were vast and we've seen over and over again that sometimes it's very hard to defeat an extremely well-funded opponent, said State Representative Alex Dominguez, D. Brownsville. They took this election seriously. I have yet to see a significant or even mediocre involvement by the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee in South Texas, Dominguez added. Colin Steele the campaign manager for Flores' opponent in the special election, Dan Sanchez, was more unsparing in a statement Wednesday. The DCCC, DNC, and other associated national committees have failed at their single purpose of existence, winning elections, Steele said.